Hi, today's lesson is on the graphs of quadratic functions. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. But let's first understand what a quadratic function is. So a quadratic function is also known as a trinomial. Let's see some examples. fx equal to x squared plus 2 or gx equal to minus 2x square plus 7x minus 9 or hx equal to minus x square. These are all quadratic functions. They are polynomials of degree 2. The highest power of x is 2. So there must be an x square term. That's what makes it a quadratic. The other terms are optional. For instance, in this one, there is no x term. And in this one, there is no x term and there is no constant term. But the x square term must be the highest degree term and it must be present. So these are called quadratic functions. You know what quadratic equations are? That's when the quadratic function is equated to something else. Then you get a quadratic equation. When we graph these functions, we get something called a parabola. So now let's look at parabolas and understand some properties of that graph. The simplest quadratic functions are y equal to x square and y equal to minus x square. Let's see what they look like. Well, the easiest way to plot a function is to take values and plot those points and then connect them with a smooth curve. So if I take x values is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and then I calculate x square, I'll get 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. Let's plot this graph. So I get a graph of the form 1 and minus 1, it's 1, and at 2 and minus 2, it's 4. So the graph would go something like this. Here, so it's a nice looking symmetric curve. So this is my simplest parabola. This is the graph of y equal to x square. Were I to plot minus x square, I just negate all these values. And that graph would be the reflection of y equal to x square in the x-axis because every value of y is now the negative of the original value of y. 4 is now minus 4, 1 is minus 1, x square is minus x square. So the graph would look something like this. If I were to plot the points. The quickest way to do it is to reflect the original graph in the x-axis. y equal to minus x square. So these are the graphs of two of the simplest parabolas there are, y equal to x square and y equal to minus x square. So let's look at the graphs of x equal to y square and x equal to minus y square. In this case, this is not a function of x, this is actually a function of y. This is actually f of x, f of y is equal to y squared and f of y is equal to minus y squared. Yeah, x is the dependent variable and y is the independent variable. You just switch the roles of x and y. And so the graphs also switch around. This will be the graph of x equal to y square. And this will be the graph of x equal to minus y square. The x and y axes have switched their roles. So let's look at a typical parabola and understand. So here's my typical parabola. And let's understand some features of the graph. So well, the important thing is this point is called the vertex. It's the lowest point on the graph. And this line, which goes through the vertex and is parallel to the y-axis, is called the axis. This is the axis of symmetry of the parabola. Why? You take any point on the graph and you reflect it in this axis 
and you will get another point on the graph on the other side. And all points on the graph are reflections across this point. So this axis divides the graph into two symmetric halves. This and this. So the two important concepts that are always featured in the study of parabolas are the vertex and the axis of symmetry. We'll soon see how the vertex and axis of symmetry can be obtained from the equation of the graph without having to actually draw the graph, thereby making the complete connection between the algebra of the parabola and the graph of the parabola. Find the vertex and axis of symmetry of the following parabolas. So here, this is clearly the vertex. And that point is 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3 is the vertex. And the axis of symmetry is clearly the y-axis. It's symmetric about the y-axis. So the axis of symmetry is y-axis. How about this question? Well, here's the vertex. It's at the point minus 4, comma, minus 5. So vertex is minus 4, comma, minus 5. And the axis of symmetry is this line in this case. It's a vertical line going through x equal to minus 4. So it's x equal to minus 4. That's the axis of symmetry. So once we have the graph, it's very easy to obtain the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Some more important things. Once we do know the vertex and axis of symmetry, it should be very easy to draw the parabola because we know the vertex is the lowest or the highest point and the axis of symmetry will go through the vertex and divide the parabola into two halves. So knowing the vertex and axis of symmetry actually captures a lot of information about the parabola. Let's get to the algebra. Find the vertex and axis of symmetry of the following parabolas. So here I'm given the function and I have to figure out the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Let's look at the first one. y equal to x minus 1 square plus 5. So my basic graph is y equal to x square. And there's been a horizontal and vertical shift. If you recall a uh, shift of functions, I'm adding a plus 5 to the y. So the entire graph has moved up 5. So up 5 units. And I'm replacing x by x minus 1. So x has been replaced by x minus 1. So the entire graph is shifting right by 1 unit. Right 1 unit. So my template graph, which is y equal to x square, has been shifted up 5 units and write one unit. So this was my original graph. And it's been shifted write one unit and up five units. So now this is my graph. Let's draw its axis of symmetry. So the vertex is now at 1 comma 5 and the axis of symmetry is the Vertical line passing through the vertex. So it is x equal to 1. So I have my vertex and axis of symmetry. I've just compared this graph to the original y equal to x square graph and shifted it horizontally and vertically. How about part 2? x plus 3 squared minus 7. So I'm doing a minus 7 to the entire function y. So it's down 7. And I've done an x going to x plus 3. So there's a shift left 3 units. So the vertex goes to minus 3, minus 7. Because I've shifted it left 3 units and down 7 units. And the axis of symmetry is clearly x equal to minus 3. Let's draw this second one. So this is this is x square, and I go left 3 units and down 7 units. So the graph ends up here. This is the new graph. And this is the vertex. Minus 3, minus 7. 
the graph of x plus 3 squared minus 7 is the graph of y equal to x squared. Find the vertex and axis of symmetry of the following parabolas. Okay, so here x is a function of y. So the template graph for this would be x equal to y squared. I know this graph looks like this. I know its vertex is 0, 0. I know its axis of symmetry is the x-axis. That is y equal to 0. How am I shifting it? It's now become x equal to y plus 1 squared. So, y has gone to y plus 1. That means I moved down one unit in the y direction. So, the new graph would be. And the axis of symmetry would be this point. This would be the vertex. So, the vertex would now be 0, comma, minus 1. And the axis of symmetry would be y equal to minus 1. So, it's important to note that this is an x equal to y square graph. So, everything is happening in the horizontal direction. The graph is opening to the right. It's not opening up or down like was the case when it was y equal to x square. It's opening right and left. In this case, it's opening right. So, the axis of symmetry is going to be a horizontal line. And in this case, we obtain it to be y equal to minus 1. Let's look at question 2 x plus 5 is equal to minus y minus 3 square. Let me write it as x is equal to minus y minus 3 square minus 5. So firstly, I'm subtracting 5 from x. So it's going to move left 5 units. And y is going to y minus 3. So it's going to move up 3 units. Graph will now have vertex minus 5 comma 3 and the axis of symmetry will be y equal to 3. Let's plot this graph. So it will x equal to minus y minus 3 square minus 5. So the template graph was x equal to minus y square. So the template graph was the one opening left, x equal to minus y square. I'm subtracting 5 from the x. So it goes to minus 5. And I'm adding 3 to the y. So it goes up 3. And this is my new vertex. And this is my new graph with a vertex at minus 5, 3, and an axis of symmetry at y equal to 3. It's important to get used to x as a function of y. And so x is now the dependent variable, and the vertex will move appropriately given the transformation in the equation. Identify the equation of the graph shown below. OK, so what's the template graph? It's a graph opening to the right. So I know the template graph is x equal to y square. That's this graph. It's my template graph. Where has it moved to? Well, it has moved two units left and two units up. It's moved to minus 2, 2. And here's where it's ended up. Let's eliminate some of the answers. It's not a y equal to graph. So these two answers are gone. And there's a shift in the x and y direction. So a is gone because a is only a shift in the x direction. So it's one of these two. y has moved up 2. We know that. y has moved up 2. So here we have it. y minus 2 squared minus 2. Let's see if both match. Yeah. So we have x is equal to y minus 2 squared minus 2. So I'm subtracting 2 from x. So x will go two units left as it has and I'm subtracting two from y so y will go two units up two up two left which means the vertex will go to minus two two as it has so d is the answer
identify the x coordinates of two points on the parabola that have the same y coordinates. So they want two points which have the same y coordinates. Let's see what the template graph is. The template graph is y equal to x square. And let's plot this graph directly. So this graph has shifted the x3 units, right, and the y1 unit up. So the vertex has gone to 3, 1. That's here. Let's draw the graph. This is the graph. And this is the axis of symmetry. This entire question hinges on the axis of symmetry. This is 3. So we know the graph has been shifted 3 units right and 1 unit up. We also know that the axis of symmetry divides the graph into two equal halves. So points on the same horizontal line are equidistant from the axis of symmetry. What's special about points on the same horizontal line? Well, they have the same y coordinate. So this point and this point have the same y coordinate. This point and this point have the same y coordinate. This point and this point have the same y coordinate. What else is special about them? Since they are reflections of each other, their distance from the axis of symmetry is equal. So what we need to do is find two points whose distance from the axis of symmetry is the same. And the axis of symmetry is at x equal to 3. So these are the x coordinates of two points, 1.5 and 5. Their distance from 3, this distance is 1.5. This distance is 2. So these two points are not on the same horizontal line because their distances from the axis of symmetry should be equal. How about 0 and 7? Well, Distance from 3 is 3, distance from 3 is 4, so it's not happening. How about minus 1 and 6? Distance from 3 is 4, distance from 3 is 3, so no. Minus 1 and 7, this looks promising. Distance from 3 is 4, distance from 3 is 4. So we have two points whose x coordinates are minus 1 and 7. And their distances from the axis of symmetry is equal, 4 and 4. So these must be two points on the parabola. Let me draw the parabola again. We'll understand this better. So the parabola had shifted to 3, 1. So here it is. And the point at minus 1 with x coordinate minus 1 and the point with x coordinate 7 have the same y coordinate for a very good reason that they are reflections of each other in the axis of symmetry. And how do I know that? Because this is at minus 1, this is at 7, this point is at 3. I'm talking about the x coordinates. So this distance is 4 and this distance is 4. So these two points are reflections of each other on the same horizontal line. So the answer was minus 1 and 7. Important question. They're testing your understanding of the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is an important line on the parabola which divides the parabola into two equal halves. But what does that actually mean? This is what it actually means. It means if I take a point on this side and I reflect it, then I will get a point on this side at the same distance. So if this distance is 2, this distance should also be 2. And these two points have the same y coordinate. They're on the same horizontal line. That's what this question is testing. The equation of a parabola in vertex form, completing the square. We are given a parabola in the usual form, y is equal to some trinomial, and they want the vertex and axis of symmetry. So far, we were giving you parabolas like x minus 3 square plus 1. So I could easily read out the vertex from this, because I knew it went up one unit and it went right three units. So the vertex shifted to 3, 1. It was easy to figure out the vertex from this form. And what is this form called? It's called writing it as a square. So y is written as a square in x plus some constant. Square plus constant. Here we have an x term too. We don't want that. We just want a square term in x and a constant. So this method of converting it is called completing the square.
We've seen it before. Let's just quickly recall it. So the two important terms are x square plus 6x. I want these to get into one big term. So obviously that term is going to be x plus 3 the whole square. Because when I square x plus 3, I'm going to get x square plus 6x. I'm also going to get a plus 9. That's the additional term I'm going to get. So I can rewrite y as x square plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 5. I need the plus 9, so I add the plus 9 and then I have to subtract it. And then I put my plus 5, which is the third term of the trinomial. So I've added a 9 and I've subtracted a 9. Now I know these three terms are a perfect square trinomial. That means they give me x plus 3 whole square. And now these two terms will give me my constant. That's a minus 4. So I've managed to complete the square. I've managed to rewrite x square plus 6x plus 5 as x plus 3 the whole square minus 4. I've got rid of the term in x. I've got rid of means I've absorbed it into the square term. Now reading the vertex is easy. I've gone down 4 units and I've gone left 3 units. So the vertex is at minus 3 comma minus 4. And so the axis of symmetry is x equal to minus 3. So once you complete the square, you pretty much have the entire information about the parabola. Let's draw this parabola. So the original parabola was y equal to x square. And the parabola of y equal to x square plus 6x plus 5 was rewritten as x plus 3 whole square minus 4. So it went left 3 units and went down 4 units. So it ended up here. This is your parabola. So this is your parabola. y equal to x square plus 6x plus 5. Find the vertex and axis of symmetry of the following parabola. x equal to minus y square plus y minus 2. Okay. So this is the more uncommon one where it's x equal to minus y square as the template. So I know the template looks like this. I'll just complete the square in y now and figure out what happens to the vertex. The function is f of y equal to minus y square plus y minus 2. I don't like a negative y square, so I'll pull out the negative. I'll get y square minus y plus 2. Now I'll complete the square within the negative. Since it's y square minus y, I know I need y minus half the whole square which will give it to me because y minus half the whole square opens out to y square minus y plus one fourth. And I get my two terms, the y square and minus y terms, which I'm interested in. And the plus one fourth is the additional constant term that I need. So how do I work with this? So I'll write it as minus y square minus y plus one fourth minus one fourth plus two. I've added and subtracted one fourth. So this becomes y minus half the whole square plus two minus one fourth is eight by four minus one by four. That's seven by four plus seven by four. So x is equal to this. Then I redistribute the minus sign. So I'll get x is equal to minus y minus half the whole square minus 7 by 4. So I have it now. Let me rewrite this. So it became x is equal to minus y minus half the whole square minus 7 by 4. This is what completing the square gave me. And the template we know is x equal to minus y square. I'm subtracting 7 by 4 by from the x. So the vertex moves to minus 7 by 4 and y is being changed to y minus half. So it moves up half. So the vertex moves up half and this is the new vertex. Since this is a horizontal parabola, the axis of symmetry will be a horizontal line and it will be y equal to half. So that's the axis of symmetry. 
So the new parabola will have moved to minus 7 by 4 half. That's somewhere here. And will look like this. Minus 7 by 4 comma half. Identifying the vertex and the axis of symmetry in general. So here we have y equal to x square plus bx plus c. And of course, you can go through the entire thing of completing the square. Let me just give you the quick way of doing this. So we know we want x square plus bx. So we know that it's going to end up as being x plus b by 2, the whole square. And you're going to be adding an additional term, etc, etc. So when you see x square plus bx, you know you're going to end up with x plus b by 2, the whole square. So the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is going to be x equal to minus b by 2. So the quick way to do it is to look at the term in x, look at the coefficient and take half of it, take b by 2. And the x coordinate is minus b by 2. How do I find the y coordinate of the vertex? Well, I plug it in. So I plug in minus b by 2 for x find y and that's the y coordinate of the vertex. And what's the axis of symmetry? Well, obviously this is the x coordinate of the vertex because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line going through the vertex. So it's a line of the form x equal to something that something will be the coordinate of the vertex. So this is also the axis of symmetry. So the steps are easy. Firstly, write your function in the form y equal to x square plus bx plus c. If there are constants, make sure you clear them so that the x square term has the constant 1. Then take the coefficient of x, divide it by 2, and the x coordinate of the vertex is minus b by 2. Once you have that x coordinate, that's also the axis of symmetry. Plug it into the equation to get the y coordinate of the vertex. Find the vertex and axis of symmetry of the following parabola. Okay, x square minus 9x plus 1. So since the x square term has coefficient 1, I'm good. I look at the coefficient of x, that's minus 9. I divide it by 2, so that's b by 2. And x is equal to minus, minus 9 by 2, which is 9 by 2. So x equal to 9 by 2 is the x coordinate of the vertex. It's also the equation of the axis. If I plug in 9 by 2, I'll get the y coordinate of the vertex. So let's plug in 9 by 2. 9 by 2 squared minus 9 into 9 by 2 plus 1. So this is 81 by 4 minus 81 by 2 plus 1. So that's minus 81 by 4 plus 1. That's minus 77 by 4. That's my y coordinate of the vertex. So the vertex is at minus 9 by, at plus 9 by 2, minus 77 by 4. So that's it for quadratic functions and parabolas. We've just touched upon their properties, but these are more than sufficient to understand them well. We've looked at the vertex of a parabola, the axis of symmetry of a parabola, and we've looked at different types of parabolas opening up, down, left and right.